One of my favourite uh, quotes or phrases is by Charles Mingos, who's a, a jazz musician, who said, uh, anyone can make the simple complicated. Creativity is making the complicated simple. So what we're doing is trying to make complicated looking molecules in the most simple way that you can. Okay, well this is, this is one of my latest papers, so I really wanted to, I'm very excited about this, uh, this project at the moment. A bit of a mouthful actually, uh, synthesis of natural product like scaffolds in unprecedented efficiency via 12-fold branching pathways. I'm going to try and explain to you uh, what I mean by that, because that's, that's a bit of a mouthful, like I say. Well, and this is going to make it simple. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, there's a lot of complexity here, but this is what we're talking about. Well, the, re the reason first that we did this work is that um, over the years, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is, has provided many interesting compounds which now treat illness and disease. This is a typical compound, an antihypertensive uh, agent. What does that mean? Uh, it's a sedative to you and me. The key feature of this is it's pretty flat. It's not a lot of three-dimensionality in this molecule. And a few studies over the last couple of years have shown that actually more three-dimensionality in a drug candidate can lead to uh, more success. And of course, receptors that these guys hit, they're all three-dimensionally shaped. You can think of them like a cave. And these guys, when they go in, um, they obviously fit in key sites, certain interactions. But if you can fill in a bit of the space around, maybe you can get uh, better selectivity and less um, oxidation and other types of degradation. What you're looking at here, there's a whole range of molecules, all of which are quite interesting looking three-dimensional shapes. You can see there's definite three-dimensionality here and here. And all of these molecules were made in a single step from this molecule here. This very simple linear looking molecule is the, the precursor to all of those, and they all take one step. Here we have two ester groups at the end, uh, over here, and we've got simple ketone in the middle. And this is just a chain connecting these two side chains. And what's that thing called, that thing you're holding? Has it got a name, that molecule? It has six keto and decadiene diene, uh, diethyl ester, <laughs> or the uh, keto diester as we like to call it. So this is the magic precursor that's going to wrap itself up and make all of these complex shapes. And you think, look at the difference between that simple molecule there and this really complicated architecture over here. That's just one chemical reaction that's done that. So the analogy is, is a piece of string. Here is our piece of string, this molecule here. Now if we can take a piece of string or a rope and we can tie this up into a knot Big fingers are great for glassware, you never drop anything. Not so good for little intricate things like that. So there you see we've made a three-dimensional shape from a linear shape. If you take a, a much bigger bit of string and you can get a more intricate looking knot. And that's what we're doing with this molecule here. So what we do is we take this central functionality, the ketone in the middle, and we can convert that into a whole range of different species so in this case, I'm just going to take that off. There goes the oxygen. We do a condensation reaction with a hydroxylamine as an amine and a, an oxygen. And what this can do is this can now react with one of these alkenes, and that forms a ring. And this oxygen here and this carbon, this functionality now is something we call a nitrone. That's now going to react like so, and it just ties around in a knot. And we've just made uh, one of these molecules here, uh, that one there. So we've just made uh, that molecule there from that linear molecule. And that's what we've done. We found 12 different so-called tandem reactions. So this tying up in a knot is something called a tandem reaction. It's where you make more than one bond in the same time. In fact, in this case, we're making this bond here, this bond here, this bond here, and this bond here. So we've made all those bonds, four bonds, in one chemical reaction. And that's just tied the whole molecule up. What we've done here is we've created a very simple way of making a whole variety of different three-dimensional 
molecules. They look very different even though they come from the same precursor. And traditionally it may have taken 10, 15, 20 steps to make something like this, which in terms of me in the lab, that could be three or four weeks if everything went to plan. Now, all of these were produced in an average of just 1.25 steps per molecule, per compound, per architecture or scaffold, as the pharmaceutical industry uh, would call them. But how has what you've made, how has the, the, the things you've made, how are these useful though? What, right. what use are they to the world? You've made, you make them efficiently, but what good are they? Right, so that's a great question. Uh, so the, the newest way of doing pharmaceutical research, trying to figure out where we can get our new generation of active compounds, is called something called fragment-based drug discovery. So in this, that we get uh, the receptor, which is part of an enzyme, and using X-ray crystallography, we can get a good map of the cave, if you like, of the receptor site. And we can do virtual docking with computers. We generate the shapes of these in the computers and the computer can dock it in and see if it fits and see if any interactions come off these uh, key functionalities. And also with this uh, type of screening, we can, if we can get uh, an enzyme which we can get an X-ray structure of, then we can flood it with a whole variety of these molecules and actually get an X-ray of these inside. And what the pharmaceutical industry needs is smallish molecules of defined three-dimensional shape with things like these purple groups here, which I've just put on, because you can change these groups into huge loads of other different types of groups. So these are really useful functional handles. And the majority of them, I have to say, came out as we hoped, um, and it was great. Uh, the occasional one, like this one, for example, chemistry just came along and surprised us a little bit. We thought that this would bend around and, and actually attach over here as well. And it turned out it didn't want to do that. So you occasionally get surprises, which are great. Uh, huge scientific breakthroughs have been made through complete serendipity or surprise or luck. Uh, and we always want to encourage luck whenever we can uh, find it. Uh, others, like this one here, uh, we designed completely the tandem reaction and we were really pleased when it came out and it worked and we made this. So this molecule here is this sample over here. Now we've not, not got very much in, in this sample. We've taken a lot of these and sent them away to biologists, but there's about 0.1 of a gram in here. So this is the um, this is this one here. So this one's a slightly lighter colour. And again, it depends on what, what we do with these over here not complicated at all. It's all about imagination and it's all about creativity.